Alright, so we all know that WoW has tons of characters, some we love, a majority we don't even remember their names, but a good handful that we have also come to dislike and even hate. In this video, I'm going to be talking about 5 hated characters in the World of Warcraft. By the way guys, if there is a character that you hate that isn't on here, just remember, it's a 5 character video, not every disliked character in the damn history of the known universe since the damn beginning of time. Number 5, Uriel. Uriel's a pretty disliked character in World of Warcraft, and it doesn't help that she was introduced into the game with Warlords of Draenor, the most terrible expansion, if you can even call it that, that we have to this date. Now personally, I don't care for Uriel, as in I don't hate her or even dislike her, but I don't really care for her that much either. The reasoning for most people's distaste for her is her character's development, paired up with the lack of content in Warlords of Draenor. Like many other characters, Grom for example. Grom one day was hellbent in massacring loads of Draenei, and oh yeah bro, Iron Horde for life. But then, few seconds later, Kilrog betrays him, and then like the day later, he stands atop the corpse of Archimon and then yells out that Draenor is free. There is no step in between, showing how and why he actually changes his perspective, how he went from foe to friend. From what we see, it looks like he's just siding with the winning side, although we all know that that is not how his character is at all. It's just due to the lack of content that his character wasn't really brought to its full potential. Same exact thing with Euro, except the difference is is that she is a newly introduced character that went from slave to exarch in the blink of an eye. She's an unnecessary character that had build up but then pretty much did nothing with it in the end. Now again, things might be entirely different if Warlords of Draenor had more to offer and her character's development had more to build off of, but then again, new characters put into an expansion with only two patches makes for some really salty players. Number 4, Anduin. Anduin is a character that a lot of people just dislike, and it's mostly due to the contrast that he holds with his father. Varian has been through so much, he's a gladiator, he's Logosh, he's a tank, juggernaut, he's a beast with two swords, he 1v1 a fucking fell reaver and lived, well, not for long after, but you know, you catch my drift. Anduin, on the other hand, is weaker, not good with a sword at all, and still, for the most part, a kid who hasn't been through nearly enough of the shit that Varian's been through. But he is still destined for greatness. Now, to people who don't really know his character too well, you may see him as a weak pussboy who will never live up to his father's gladiator reputation, and who has really done nothing for the Alliance. In actuality, though, he is stated by many people, including Jaina, to be much wiser beyond his years. He's resolved plenty of political disputes without bloodshed. For example, Varian almost assassinated Moira, but Anduin ended the event without bloodshed, ultimately avoiding an all-out dwarven civil war which would lead to many issues, especially since Deathwing was about to be around the corner and tear the freaking world apart with the Cataclysm. He is also stated by Velen to have an incredibly strong and unique connection to the Light, which means that one day, alongside Illidan and maybe Velen, Anduin too will lead the Army of the Light, a golden army that will perhaps be the end of the Legion and defy the Void Lords themselves. Now is Anduin ready for this position right now? Hell no. He still has much to learn, like when he went off in Pandaria and the Alliance were searching for him. But these aspects will come to him with time. Legion will mold him into a better leader, at least I hope, as well as the expansions following it. And although he will most likely never lead the Alliance the same way Varian did, as in, you know, with a battle cry and sword slashing through everyone, it is his time to receive the spotlight and I hope Blizzard gives his character some justice. Number 3, Kromgar. Krumgar was the commander of the Horde forces in the Stone Talon Mountains and who was fiercely loyal to the Horde, especially to Garrosh. However, in the quest chain revolving around him, we find out that he falls out of favor with Garrosh and in turn is executed by the Warchief himself by being dropped off of a cliff. What happens is that his spies receive false word that the Night Elves are building a weapon of mass destruction and hiding it within an ancient tree. The ancient tree within Thaldura Grove is actually a friendly study studying ground to both Torin and Night Elf Druids and poses no threat at all to the Horde. Chieftain Cliffwalker is determined to prove this to Kramgar, so he sends his son, Orthos, to confirm that Thaldra Grove possesses no weapon of mass destruction whatsoever. However, after Orthos has not returned, High Chieftain Cliffwalker dispatches us to see what is up, and we find out that Kramgar's second in command, General Grebo, murdered the Druids in order to conceal the secret that there was, in fact, no weapon. 
we tell the High Chieftain of what the hell is going on, and together with his wife Masha, we kill the General. The High Chieftain and his wife then ask you, the player, to go back and speak to Kramgar to straighten everything out. But the moment you say that Grebo is dead, Kramgar's like, WHAT?! then storms off to confront the High Chieftain before we can really do anything or tell him the full story. We meet him back at Cliffwalker Post to see that the High Chieftain's tents had been burned, numerous Torin are dead, and Masha is actually murdered too. To add more misery to the plate, Kramgar keeps Chieftain Cliffwalker alive as he bombs Daldra Grove, killing many Night Elves, Torin, and even children. Garrosh finds out right away and sentences Kramgar to death for his dishonorable actions by throwing him off of a cliff. Number 2, Blackmore. A lesser known character in the Warcraft universe, but anyone who knows of him can agree that this guy is pretty much a dick. To cut it short, his father was labeled as a traitor for selling alliance secrets to their enemies which caused many people to look down upon him. However, despite this label, he eventually worked his way to the position of overseer of all of the orcish internment camps. Despite this promotion though, his public appearance was still pretty crappy since he was basically drunk most of the time. Now let's get on to the true reason why people hate him. Blackmore found Thrall when he was an infant, took him back to Durnhold, and raised the orc as a vicious gladiator but an honorable one as well. However, Blackmore had much more in mind for his orc slave. He not only wanted Thrall to fight in the gladiator ring and make him some cash, he also wanted Thrall to unite an army of orcs to march upon the alliance, overpower the human kingdom, and then turn over the lands to Blackmore. So much for trying to right the wrongs of his father. However, there was a mistake in Blackmore's plan, a huge mistake which was overlooked. Thrall was not a mindless beast loyal only to Blackmore. As time went on, Thrall realized that forever among Blackmore and his peers, he would be treated as a barbaric animal, and with this in mind, he decided to escape Durnhold with the help of Blackmore's wife, Teretha Foxton. Oh, it should also be noted that Blackmore beats her pretty often and made her his mistress while she had no say in the matter, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Also, before the days of the Undead Plague, Arthas visited Durnhold and Blackmore sent Teretha to the prince's quarters one night to have sex with him. This was done so that Blackmore could get on Arthas' good side. What it actually did, however, was make Arthas despise him even more. Good guy Arthas, however, told her that this wasn't necessary, but she replied by saying that she had to please him because if she were to go back to Blackmore, he would beat her mercilessly. After seeing the bruises on her arms, wrists, and neck, Arthas understood, then told her that she was welcome to stay in his quarters as long as she desired, and the two laughed together, ate a meal, and had a good time. Going back to the events of Durnhold, however, Thrall escapes with her help, thanks her, but before the two part ways, Thrall also sees the bruises on her body. The younger orc begs her to come with him, but she refuses because if she left with him, then her family will suffer Blackmore's wrath. Time passes and Thrall returns no longer a slave, but a war chief of a new horde. The army of orcs marching upon Durnhold and Thrall demands Blackmore to stand down. Surprisingly, Blackmore is drunk and after the two of them exchange words, Blackmore refuses to stand down and then hurls the severed head of Teretha at Thrall. For the first time ever in his life, Thrall actually cried at the sight of his friend being murdered by this scumlord asshole, and Thrall eventually makes his way to Blackmore through all of the fighting and kills him. If you like Blackmore, there is something seriously wrong with you. He's a traitor, abuses women and slaves, is drunk 24-7, and severed the head of his own wife. Number 1, Maiev Shadow Song. Maiev is someone that I personally dislike a lot because she is just so blinded by her narrow-sided path of vengeance that it has ultimately led to the deaths of her closest allies, watchers, and friends. You could say the same about Arthas, but screw that dude, Arthas is great. Plus, when he was blinded by his path of vengeance, it was because a new unknown, uncontrolled threat was threatening his kingdom, and he wanted to do everything that he could to make sure that that threat was put to an end as quickly as possible. Maiev just couldn't let go of the past, and of her drive for imprisoning or killing Illidan. She hunted him through Outland because of revenge. Even when the Broken, the Night Elves, and the Naru told her that Illidan was doing what he was doing to defy the Legion, she was so stubborn and hard-headed that she ignored their warnings and statements and just ventured off to recruit people to join her crusade of killing and capturing Illidan. When a Naru tells you something and refuses to aid you in your crusade, that's probably something that you should take into account. Also, spoilers from the Illidan novel here, I'll tell you what timestamp to skip to if you don't want to hear this. Three, two, one. 
When we raid the Black Temple in BC, Maiev runs across the courtyard and encounters an incredibly powerful demon hunter named Vandal. She immediately attacks him, but Vandal tells her that he does not want to fight her. He only wants to end the threat of their common enemy, the Burning Legion. She of course ignores this and keeps on attacking him relentlessly, and Vandal does nothing to fight back. He just dodges her attacks and pleads with her to stop attacking him. However, time is short and eventually he is forced to defend himself and try to end the conflict. Maiev then says to herself that for a second she was convinced that Vandal truly did not want to fight, but after she saw him cast a fell bolt at her, she knew that he was an enemy. Makes no sense. If somebody tried to kill me for 5 minutes straight, eventually I'm going to get tired of that shit and try to defend myself. Ah, she pisses me off, man. And keep in mind, this isn't even covering all of her crimes. Like, she pulls off some crazy stuff in Wolfheart, too. Man, it just sucks that she is a brilliant fighter. One of the best, but she is just so blinded by her thirst to kill Illidan that she can't think outside of the box. Ah, uh, it's whatever though, at least we still have Jared. Jared's really cool. That's it to this video, guys. I was really tempted to put in Ronin, don't get me wrong. But people don't really hate his character, they just hate his annoying ass chat spamming people of Dalaran shit. Also, I was going to put in Medan, since a lot of people tend to hate him, wishing that he was dead, killed, being tortured or whatever, but I'd figured that I'd reserve a character like him for a part 2, especially since there's so much that you could talk about when it comes to Medan. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching, if you have any other characters that you straight up hate and wow, or maybe just you know dislike a little bit, let me know down below so I can start on part 2 as soon as possible. Peace out guys.